In this video, we're going to look at the bonding mechanism known as ionic bonding. And the simplest way to remember ionic bonding is that it's the donating of electrons. So one of the atoms is going to donate electrons to the other atom in order to create ions. And as we'll see in a moment, an ion is just a positively or negatively charged particle. Now this type of bonding typically occurs between a metal and a non-metal. So what we have on the left hand side is sodium which is a metal, more specifically it's an alkali metal, and on the right hand side we have chlorine which is a halogen, and a halogen is a type of non-metal. So here we're looking at the bonding between a metal and a non-metal, therefore we would expect it to be ionic bonding. But as we have pictured on the screen here, we have an atom of sodium and we have an atom of chlorine. We know that these are atoms because from the periodic table we know that a sodium atom has 11 electrons and here we have it pictured with two on the inside shell, eight on the second shell and then one on the outside shell giving us our total of 11. We also know that this is a chlorine atom because chlorine has 17 electrons and again we have this pictured with two electrons on the inside shell, eight on the second and seven on the third shell. So here we have pictured the two atoms. But in order for this to be ionic bonding or in order to convert each of these from atoms to ions, we need to disrupt the number of electrons in each of these atoms. Now, as we've mentioned in an earlier video, these atoms are relatively unstable because sodium doesn't have a complete outer shell and neither does chlorine. In order for these to be stable, they need to have a complete or a full outer shell. Now, the way that this is achieved is that our sodium is going to donate or give up an electron and it's going to give up an electron to the chlorine, like so. So let's remove our electron from sodium, from the outer shell, and instead of being on the sodium's outer shell, it's going to move onto the chlorine's outer shell. So we said that a sodium atom had 11 electrons, but now we have only 10 electrons. So what we actually have now is a sodium ion. And if something has a neutral charge and then it loses a negative charge, what we actually end up with is a positive ion. So it has a relative charge of plus one. If we relate that thinking to the chlorine atom, which had 17 electrons, when it had 17 electrons, it was an atom, it was neutral, but it gained an electron. Now it has 18 electrons, so it's gained a negative charge. Well, if it's gained a negative charge, it now has a charge of minus one. So neither of these are atoms anymore. What they've become is ions, because now they have a positive or a negative charge. So on the left we have a sodium ion, and on the right we have a chlorine ion. So the important thing here is that positives and negative attract. So on the bottom here, if we have a sodium plus and a chlorine minus, then much like static, these two ions are going to be attracted together. They're going to feel a very strong force of attraction and that's the essence of our ionic bond. Let's take a look at another example. In this second example, we have a magnesium atom on the left and we have an oxygen atom on the right. We know that these are atoms because magnesium has 12 electrons and oxygen has 8 electrons. We can get that information from the periodic table. And what we're going to look at here is how an ionic bond forms between magnesium and oxygen in order to form magnesium oxide. So because magnesium has 12 electrons, we know that it has 2 on the inside shell, 8 on the second shell and 2 in its outer shell. Now oxygen with its 8 electrons has two on the inside shell, but only six on its second shell. Now we know that both of these atoms are going to be unstable. Magnesium wishes to lose electrons and oxygen wishes to gain electrons. And what we see here is a transfer of two electrons from magnesium to oxygen. So the first electron moves across and the second electron moves across. And we'll remove those from our magnesium atom. So when the electrons have transferred from magnesium, we know that we have an ion. 
because an ion is either positively or negatively charged. So we can write here, we have 10 electrons. We know that we have an ion now. And if the magnesium has lost two negative charges, it must have a charge now of two plus. So it's positively charged, but that charge is two plus because two electrons have transferred. And we can apply the same logic to our oxygen because our oxygen now also has 10 electrons. It's also become an ion, but because it's gained two negative charges, that now has a charge of two minus. Now both of these ions are stable because magnesium has a full outer shell, that second shell, and oxygen also has a full outer shell. Now when these combine, what we'll end up with is Mg, the charge on that's two plus, O, the charge on that's two minus. Therefore the chemical formula for magnesium oxide is just MgO. One magnesium atom in effect combines with one oxygen atom. Let's take a look at one final example. So in this final example, we're going to look at the ionic bond that forms between magnesium and chlorine. And we already know that magnesium needs to lose two electrons, but chlorine only needs to gain one electron. So first of all, our magnesium atom is going to give up one electron to this chlorine. And now that chlorine is stable. It has the correct number of electrons in its outer shell. So what we can write at the bottom here, 18 electrons, we know it's stable. And we also know it has a negative charge minus because it's gained a negatively charged particle. But unfortunately, our magnesium isn't stable. Our magnesium's got 11 electrons, and what it really wants is 10 electrons to be stable. Well, in order to be stable, magnesium needs to lose two electrons. Losing two negatively charged particles would mean that it was two plus. So in actual fact, what the magnesium needs to do is donate the other electron to another chlorine atom. And that's exactly what it does. So the way we can show this is by removing the electron from our magnesium. We can put our chlorine inside a square bracket. And we can specify that there's actually going to be two of those. The important thing to us is what's happening in order for this bond to form. We can see that one magnesium atom is going to give up electrons to two chlorine atoms in order to become a magnesium ion. So at the bottom here, we have the magnesium ion, Mg2+. But we've already said that the chlorine ion only has one negative charge. So from a notation point of view, we place a two here to denote that two chlorine ions are joining with one magnesium ion. So the chemical formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. The key things to remember about ionic bonding is it's the bond that occurs between a metal and a non-metal. And the simplest way to remember ionic bonds is we have the donation of electrons. When this happens, we form ions, and then the positive and negative ions are attracted together due to their difference in charges, because one has a positive charge and the other has a negative charge.